Okay, I rambled on too long in my last video um, that I was trying to do here, so I'm going to re-record it. Okay, first thing I do is I paste in my picture, which is on this bottom layer here, and then I you want to make sure you have your arrows selected, make sure there's an arrow behind it there, or the blue thing, and set your opacity down. That way it's easier to sketch on top of Then put the check here, the little lock box. Make a layer on top of that by clicking this button here. Select your brush, double click on the brush, make sure Fidelity 2, 1, 9, make sure these two are not selected. You can have the top one selected, but make sure this middle one is unselected. That's very important when inking. Okay, so there you go. Click OK and mess around with your fidelity and smoothness and width until you find something you're, you're happy with. But I, I pretty much like this. It works pretty good. Double click on your brush. Make sure variation set to 3. Pressure, diameter 3. Or you can you can set this whatever you want, 4, 4. Um, you know, it depends how thick you want your lines. And the thinnest line you want depends if you want variation. So I want to be able to go from 1 to 3. OK, then click OK. We're ready to start inking. Now what's cool about Illustrator is I could go slow with my lines and I'm still going to get a nice line. Watch, I'll go nice and slow. And see that? How it's went pink. That was the fidelity and smoothness. So it just makes it nice and smooth. So even if you have a jaggedy hand, a slightly, you know, your slightly twitchy hand like I have, sometimes when I'm doing slow lines, you can still get a nice smooth edge, as you can see there. And obviously this lets you also get different levels of pressure sensitivity by how hard you push on it. And what I do is I always open up my Wacom tablet properties and I put my firmness almost all the way up with this program. I don't do that with other programs, but this one it needs to be way up like that. Otherwise, you don't get the variation you want. It's harder. Let's go up to her face here. So, you see I made thinner lines on the left and thicker lines on the right, kind of showing um, where, where light's hitting. What's cool with the editing is if I don't like a line, I can select my line and I can just delete it, which can really save a lot of time. You can also split lines and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these lines uh, thinner on this side, like that, and then I'd make these lines over here thicker now that I decided to do that, and I can just simply select them and delete them by hitting the delete key on the keyboard. So I'll make this line thicker Not, I'm not really zoomed in enough to connect those perfectly, but whatever. That works for me. Okay, so there you go. I just wanted to show a little bit with inking with it. It works really good. You can go thin, and then get gradually get thicker as you're pushing more pressure. Sometimes it does that, and um, I think that's just... I need to reinstall Photoshop Illustrator. But notice when you try to do weird lines like that, or you try to do a square line like this, those are the worst lines to try to do, and what you have to do is make three, oops, make three lines. That's its only weakness, or you can just turn Fidelity off all that completely when doing those kinds of lines. Okay, so let's move on to Coral Painter. So I'm working on a resolution of 300. I have the layer here which the passage is turned down on, and a layer on top of it I'm going to be working with. I'm actually using Rob's brushes, which you can go to CG, CG Talk Forums, and then go to the uh, Coral Painter form, and you can download them. Or you can use the standard brushes, and if you use the standard brushes, uh, what you want to pick is a good, solid brush that works like uh, the Photoshop brush. Um, a basic flat brush with no opacity, no bleed or anything, but you have you have the size. Uh, what I really like here is this new brush thing, and see that little icon? It's very cool. You can tell, like, the how your p 
pin is situated, the angle of your pin, like right now my, my pin's straight up and down, see that? And, I, and I'm right, and I can see right in the middle where I'm going to be drawing, and then if I angle my pin, you can see that it's angled. Now I'm drawing at an angle, and very cool. Glad they did that. Uh, it's just a really cool icon they did. I'm going to choose black. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a line here really quick. Now with, the th you know, again, the harder I push, the thicker my line. Or actually, I don't know, maybe this one, maybe this pin's not set up that way. Nope, it's not. Never mind, it was uh, was working just fine. I uh, forgot to turn my Wacom pin pressure back down to the middle for this program. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a line. So the thinner I push, the thick and the you know I can get really thick with this one. Now that was a really weird jump because I I didn't gradually do it, but um, typically we'll never press that hard. I can also turn the maximum. And you see what happens is with this program, you kind of you want to make like kind of fast lines like this, and you want to make you know decisive lines, and it's hard to pull that off. I actually sometimes find it easier in Photoshop to do it. I don't know why. So that's the problem I have with this program, with any other inking program besides Illustrator, is they don't seem to work as good. Like Maybe it's because I have a jittery hand. I, I don't notice it when I'm painting, but when I'm inking, I, I do. If I ink in, if I ink with hand, like uh, with a pen on a piece of paper, I don't have that problem. I can I can work slow and everything's fine. So anyway, this is why I don't prefer this program, and also because if I do want to make a controlled slow motion, I find it a lot harder with Ill with this. Now it actually doesn't. I'm really zoomed in past 100 percent there. So um, let's go. Oh, well, that's almost 100 percent. So for a lot of the lines, but for this line here, if I wanted that whole line, that whole bottom line there, it's going to be kind of hard, especially with. Uh, I'm going to have to do, I could probably only do half of it at a time. Even with Illustrator, it's kind of hard, but it'll still work. See, it's that, that under part, the way my hand has to move, it's hard to get it how I want it. I'm trying to see if I could, I'm trying to situate my hand in different ways. Not working. What I could do is use the turn feature so then I can you know angle it how I want it so I can start first here and just kind of start the line but see how jittery that is I don't want that it's like if I want to go slow it doesn't seem to work so anyway to be fair, I did sort of exaggerate that. Um, it's it's a decent. You can ink okay with it. You kind of have to work fast though. And now we'll go to Photoshop. Now with Photoshop, it's pretty much the same problem. But quickly, pick a hard brush. Uh, smoothing. You don't have to have noise on if you don't want to. Uh, brush tip tape important. Brush tip shape. Put it down. Spacing all the way to the left. Only have shape dynamics on to pin pressure. Everything else off and don't have anything else on. Okay. I'm running out of time. Got to hurry up and do this. I have 40 seconds, so I'm just going to show you a really quick line, and like that. So if you want it to go, you have to kind of work fast if you want your lines to look good. Um, but you see, it's like when you want to do certain like that, it's like, how can I get this line fast? I kind of have to go slow, but then it's a little bit jaggy. You know, you can't get perfect lines. And so Illustrator, I believe, is the best. You can you can zoom in more, you know, and you can try to get slightly better lines. 
Okay, done.